Our guest on this episode is Shasha Daminola Alesh, a singer, songwriter, and rapper. He's described as being a rapper, Afro pop, and RB artist with singles like Miracle, Ote Dola, and Alakori. Let's make welcome the versatile artist, Dice Ailes. Hey. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How you guys doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm chilling. You guys look nice. Oh, Thank you. Exactly. How many versions of your name have you heard? Because I know I had versions. like one of the wrong ones. Yes. Till I, I corrected heard. myself. Alice, I've heard. Alice, I've heard. Ailes, I've heard all sorts of things. But it's Ailes. Dice Ailes. Tell us where this name's coming from. All your names are actually quite interesting. If I don't put your name last, I just get like the dice image and like, oh, sorry, I didn't put the email. I have to then go back and like put your last name. So where are all these names coming from? Yeah, so the dice describes that there's many sides to me as an artist and I'm unpredictable. Um, and that just shows in like how dynamic my music is. I, you know, do all sorts of stuff. I rap, I sing, I, I like to experiment stuff. And the ales is from my actual last name, which is Alesh. I just made that up. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Right. Okay. All right so yeah. a lot of people um, in your position, because you've been relevant since like um, 2017 with right. your Ted Dollar Jam, and um, you've dropped a lot of others. So Miracle, Ella, Ella is my favorite, by the Thank way. You. So um, a lot of people would say that you're underrated. Do you agree? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think um, it's possible that some people underrate me. It's possible some people overrate me, um, but in life you get underrated and get overrated yeah. and get rated sometimes. But do you think so you're in your getting... opinion? Do you think yeah. you're getting the recognition you deserve from all the work you put out there? I think that I, I may not have put out enough work. Um, I feel like um, the people haven't necessarily heard. Um, they haven't fully grasped what Dice is about. Right. Um, and so I feel like by the end of 2020, then we can have that conversation about. Um, being underrated or being rated. Mm. Why do you me? think people haven't gotten enough of, like they, they haven't gotten a grasp of what DICE is all about? What's the cost for that? I think that I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't put out um, your stuff. My okay, stuff. so I if haven't you put haven't out, put out your stuff, yeah. is it a strategic problem or is, or it, is it from the record label thing? or is mm. it from you? I mean, um, I think that the timing hasn't just been right. I've been, like, I like to put out quality stuff. For my visuals, I, I spent time, you know, making that, producing it. The music has to be right, everything has to be right. Um, and I feel like I may not have been in the right frame of mind or in the right mental space to follow that up as consistently as possible. Um, but I mean, I said, like I said, in this year, I think I'm in the right place, right frame of mind. And Pim Pim is the first single off the album. Um, I'm going to put out an album sometime this year, and so it's like this is the right Do you mind right if we just go a bit deeper into it? It kind of sounds personal, so I'm going to trade here. Um, right. But you were talking about like mental health and being in the right space. Like that's really like a big thing that you've just dropped there. So right. if you can just shed a little more light on what that means for you and why you're saying that. Uh, I mean, like I said, it just has to feel right. I mean, everything right. just has to connect. It has to make sense um, physically, spiritually. Mm -hmm. It all has to make sense, you know what I'm saying? And if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? Does your record label back that up? Because I mean, like, the, this sounds a lot personal. And right? for record labels, it's more business. Don't they have like this question where they're like, listen, I don't care where you are, like, start to dish out this, at least it's a mini amount of singles or? Yeah, I mean, um, so like I, the, the record label situation that I had with Chocolate City, um, even within the contract terms and everything, I was still very in charge of the stuff that I was doing and um, where you said that in past tense. So okay, I am in my life. I am generally in charge of my life. Are you right. still signed to Chuck City? So, as I was saying, before okay. you <laughs> <laughs> three questions at you. Sorry. Yeah, so many questions. I feel like I'm doing an interview. Yeah, <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> but, yeah so um, I'm like I'm very in charge of like the type of visuals, of what I post. Mm. No one really tells me what I do or what to do. You right. know what I'm saying so. Um, the, the label, you know, was there to collaborate with me and do what I wanted to do and then do what they had to do and while I do what I, my obligations towards them. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you, now can you answer the other bit? Because they're all part? like past tense. Are you still with Chocolate, Chocolate City? 
I'm with you, I'm with Chuck, I'm with everybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're sounding like Bwari. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with everybody, but I belong to nobody. Is that, is that the case? You belong to nobody? Yeah, I'm with everybody, I belong to nobody. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. 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 Um, All right, so let's talk about Pim Pim. Pim Pim is your um, latest body of work with yeah. Olamide. And Olamide just dropped the 999 album, and that yeah. has been driving everyone crazy. So why the choice for Lamy Day and what's the inspiration behind Pim Pim? Is there a special Pim Pim girl right now? So which one am I answering first? It has <laughs> All like, of them. It has like four different questions. So why Olami Day? Yeah. Um, so like I did not intend for it to be Olami Day. It was mm. just a song that I recorded in my spare time. Mm. And then at one time me and Olami Day was chilling in the studio, which is vibing at, at a co hotel, I think. And he heard the song and he's like, yo, I really like this song. I want to jump on it. And we loaded it up. And you know, he, he dropped the verse, and that's how the song came about. And the inspiration behind it, um, there's no specific pimp in my life. There's, uh. there's a lot of pimp in my life. Okay. Right. Um, okay. I was just Hot writing. Broken. Period. <laughs> <laughs> he said I what was, he said. <laughs> I was just writing, I was just being poetic. I was just being like, I like to write in similes, you know, um, you press my horn, pimp pimp. Because mm. growing up, that was a horn for us, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you didn't make my heart beam beam, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, I, I like to write in similes like that. Mm. Mm. What other side of you have we not seen? Because you said you like poetry, you like mm. writing in similes. Yeah, like I started off just writing poems mm -hmm. when I was younger. I used to have like a book, just writing and writing and writing. And then, it, and then that led to, at some point I started rapping. And then in 20, I think 15, I started to consider Afro beats. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I ever really like sang and did anything was, I think, I think Fantasy, the first single, would have, I think that was probably like my second or third Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. Miracle was probably like my fourth or fifth. And somehow people just seemed to accept me like I'm a real Afrobeat artist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So. Because um, I was going to ask um, with that, where you've kind of sort of asked, uh, answered the question. You're pretty, pretty young. Um, and I wanted to know what the. I guess behind the scenes was for you usually for artists who come or who have made like a name for themselves they're quite older and they've done like the back work and you know they've been in the industry for a long time and then it doesn't seem like that's what's happening with you it looks like like right on the spot you're out there but i could be wrong so can you just give us like a i guess a backstory yeah of like what your life looked like before we actually said it um really yeah i mean um so like the music thing started like when i was really young i was like eight years old mm. i was just I would be around like my uncles, they were songwriters. They all wanted to become like huge stars. And for some reason, none of them ever even made it to a studio to record. Wow. So like, I was always just watching them and my mom too was a choir. So I'd just be there and learning the stuff they were doing. I used to drum a lot. I was playing the harmonica, just being involved with the music. And when I turned 15, I saved up money and went to the studio and took one of my uncles that wanted to be a star. I took him to the studio and wrote him a hook and then sang that to my rap. And then from then on, you know, I was chasing for radio airplay. Um, I remember one of my first records got played on Rhythm FM and that was like exciting for me. I was really young at the time. And, um, you know, so I've, I've been like chasing this thing. And then in Canada as well, I, I was with a group called Phase Two Collective. It was like 10 rappers, yeah. and, you know, we're rapping. That's doing, a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's, that, there's a lot of stuff that I was doing behind the scenes. But as soon as I was ready for Afro Beast, it was ready for me as soon as I dropped the first record, you know, um, you know, the Chocolate City conversation came and then I traveled back, came here, dropped Miracle, you know, blew up. Um, I got nominated at the award show. So it seemed like I did a lot of work since I was eight just for mm -hmm. this to happen snappy. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about your style. I mean, Miracle, Alakori, yeah. Ella, there's a kind of playful fun in yeah. it that makes it stick. So if you're asked to define your style or what made you choose this style, what would you say? Man, I think it's just original. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I didn't pick the sound or anything. I just have fun. I'm really playful when I'm not on camera. So, like I, so when I'm recording, like it, I think it just comes out. And, right. I, you know, like, we all tell a lot, you can tell. Like, I'm really just playing with words. Mm. And with Pim Pim, with Ella Ella, like, I, I like to play a lot. And I think just my personality shows in my music. So what what would you say right now with the music that you've got out? We know it's not the holistic view of you because you right. have so much more. But right now, what would you say is that music that you're like, okay, this describes me more. Like if I wanted any music to represent me, this is the one I would use. I think Oterola, Oterola really describes me. Right. Uh, 
Yeah. All right, so I'm a rap head, right? So a lot of people don't know about your rap side so much. Right. Yeah. So um, what would you say happened to the rap? Are you, is it because of the um, commerciality? Like you're trying to make some money, so you went into the old Afro pop and all of that. Or you just feel like it's not yet time for rap, especially because with a record label like Chocolate City, where you have lots of rappers on, on that label, one would expect that, okay, that's a good platform for you to push your rap side, but you're not doing much of that. So what's the reason behind that? Um, at the time that I came in here, I just felt like, like Nigerians didn't understand what I was trying to do with my rap. And I, I didn't, and I, I understand the market, and I'm not gonna be selling to you what you're not ready to buy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't about money for so me. So they're it's pretty not... much not ready for that. Okay. I just <laughs> think we're still yeah, not so ready. I just, I just felt like they like I just felt like people didn't get it. And mm -hmm. um, I wasn't gonna be out here wasting my time. Because right. at the end of the day, like I want you to hear me. Yeah. So I'm not mm -hmm. gonna be talking to deaf ears, so mm -hmm. right? right. So I'm, I'm out here doing okay. what you want to I wish hear. you had more time, but well, thank you. No, he can't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's how we ruffle up this episode. Look, my voice is gone, bro. <laughs> Sit by the bell. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can catch up on this conversation and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, A Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Shankaya, and of course, our guest, Dice Ayos. Thank, thank you. you for being here. Thank you for having me. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later. Thank you.